Now, brothers and sisters, we're going to get into the word this morning. But how many of us were here last night and heard the message last night? Were you blessed? Was it clear? Was it straightforward? Now, I'm going to tell you this, and I didn't tell him I was going to say this or any of that. But if that's the only message you heard, you heard enough to be saved. Victory over sin is the goal for God's people. Period. Everything we, we preach and teach, everything in the Bible leads us back to how? To be unbound and victorious. Amen. The testimonies brought us all the way back around to how to be free from sin. To be converted and to walk with Jesus. That's the whole goal. So if you don't hear anything else, you heard enough. Now I pray that what we talk about today just continues the journey on. And that we continue upward to a mountaintop experience. How many of us know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is getting ready to come? Amen. Not soliloquy. We're not guessing. You know it. It's in here. You feel it. You look around and you see the signs and everything says, get ready. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you something. Anything worth being a part of takes sacrifice. Anything. You want to be a Navy SEAL? Guess what you're going to go through? You're going to go down there. You're going to go through it. You want to get into a prestigious college? The, the, the process for getting in is going to be what? More challenging. You don't just decide you want to go. Anything worth being a part of costs something. Now, there's nothing more precious and more grand than eternal life. Would you agree? Amen. Then that means what? Getting to heaven is going to what? It's going to cost something. I want that to sink in. We shall not See the king of kings without a struggle. Not going to happen. If we want to see Jesus in peace, if we want to see him face to face, it's going to cost something. It's going to cost some sacrifice. It's going to cost some disconnecting from this world. Well, brothers and sisters, I don't know if you've ever let your mind, your imagination run wild when trying to contemplate what heaven is going to be like. What's it going to look like? What the angels look like? What does the face of Jesus look like? What do mansions look like? How big is heaven? Have you ever let your imagination just go there? Where I can tell you the best that you can come away with in your mind does not come close to what it's going to be like. But if the best you could come up with caused you to smile and caused you to want to be there, then guess what we got to do? Be prepared for the cost that it takes to serve the master. Now, brothers and sisters, that cost, if you love Jesus, the cost of heaven is nothing compared to what heaven is going to really be like. So I, I want us to get our minds in, in this groove. Lord, I want to see you face to face. I, I want to have this experience where when you come, I don't run. I want to have that experience that when you come, I actually stand there and my face is lighted up and I'm smiling because now I realize 
that eternal life is about to begin. Brothers and sisters, the world knows that something is awry. But you know what the problem is? They don't know the answer. They don't know what to do about it. They don't know how to function. They don't know what to do. So they're just running around creating a mess. And what we're going to talk about today, by the end of the message, cherishing the birthright. Brothers and sisters, God's people have a birthright. We need to cherish it in humility, but we need to cherish it. If we cherish the birthright, it will cause us to move. It will call us to action. So as we get ready to go forward this morning, I want you to be thinking, Lord, speak to me what I need to hear. God is the only one that can meet all of us where we are. Take the same message and talk to us individually and tell us what we need and draw us all closer to him. He did it at Pentecost. He's done it time and time again. And today, as we get ready to pray, I want you to ask the Lord, Lord, meet me where I am. I don't care where you are. Ask the Lord to meet you where you are and to talk to you how you need to hear it. And then ask him, to wrap his arms around you and to hold you close. God wants to do something special today. So as we get ready to pray, pray that prayer. Lord, meet me where I am. Talk to me how I need to hear it. Clarify it for me today and draw me closer so that a change takes place today. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we kneel at the foot of the cross today. Lord, after you woke us up this morning, we've done the only thing that we could do in our quest for salvation today, and that is to make the choice to come into this place. Lord, this is your moment. Fill this room with thy presence, we pray. Begin to massage our hearts, Lord, that we may hear clearly what you are saying to us, Lord. Bypass every obstruction. Go through every wall and speak to our hearts today, we pray. Hide me, Lord. I am nothing. You are everything. Speak to us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Cherishing the birthright. Now, as we get started this morning, let's go back to our scripture reading and start there as we begin to go through and look at what God's word is saying. Because as we read the word of God, we need understanding, amen? amen. We don't need to run by words and run by quotations and, and punctuations and don't understand what we read because God did not choose words in his Bible by happenstance, amen? Amen. Hebrews chapter 12 <clears throat> 
verse 1 says, and when you have it, let me hear you say amen. amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of, what's that word? Witnesses. What does it say next? Let us do what? Lay aside, Lay aside every weight. And what? Now that's, that's key right there. Not the sins, the sin, which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now before we go to verse 2, let's look back at verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. What do you think the cloud of witnesses being described here are? Angels and the unfallen worlds. Well, I would say partly that is correct. Let's see what the prophet tells us about these witnesses. Who are the witnesses? What does it say? They are those spoken of in the what? So what chapter is that? Hebrews chapter 11. Well, who is in Hebrews chapter 11? Moses. It's the hall of faith. Moses, Enoch, Sarah, Joshua, Rahab, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, all of these people. Now, what is so key about those people in chapter 11? They had faith, but what happened to them? Are they still alive? No. So what happened? They died in, well, they died in Christ, but they died in, what is it, the hall of? So they died in faith. Now, what does the end of chapter 11 say about all of those who are mentioned in chapter 11? Uh, uh, one person quoted it and read it, but let's, let's read it together so that we are clear. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39 and 40. Hebrews 11, just we should be right on the next page over. We're going to read verse 39 and 40. Verse 39 says, And these all, having obtained what? A good report through what? Faith. Received not what? The promise. What is the promise? Eternal life. So they died in faith. Meaning they lived the life Christ wanted them to live. And they died in faith, but had not received the promise. What does verse 40 say? God having what? Provided some better thing for us. That what? Should not be made perfect. Now, do we understand what we just read? All of these people in chapter 11 died in faith. They died looking waiting for Christ to come. They were hoping it was going to happen in their day, but it did not. So they could not receive the promise of eternal life. Well, what is the rest of the verse suggesting? Them without who? Uh-oh. Them without us cannot be made perfect. So the Bible is telling us something very key about us right now. That they died in faith, waiting on the promise. We are living in a time where we've got to do what? Fulfill the promise. Now what is, what is, now if you were listening last night, some of these answers were given last night. Now, what is the expectation of God to his people? How does he want us to live? 
sin less. Victory over sin. Now, them, meaning they obtained a good report. So they died. Well, let me go. Let, let, me, let me give a little more explanation. When Israel, on the Day of Atonement, we're just going to paint a picture. On the Day of Atonement, the high priest went into the most holy place, amen, and officiated there. All of the people who had died throughout the year, who had come and brought their sin offerings and put their, the, the blood of their sin offerings were put on the curtain. Were they still on the curtain on the Day of Atonement? Yes. yes. Come on, talk to me now. I don't like to preach and be quiet. <laughs> their blood was still on the curtain. So those people died, what? In faith. Waiting on the Okay, talk to me now. Waiting on the promise. Those who were alive on the Day of Atonement had to have all of their sins also on the curtain. So when the high priest came out of the most holy place and put his hands on the head of the scapegoat, all sins were cleansed. They were transferred. So that means that on that day, everyone... Even those that had died, now there's no more remembrance of their sins. Does that make sense? Okay. So now those who have died in faith, waiting on the promise, it said they had obtained a good report, meaning when they had died. They died with their sins on the curtain. And now they're waiting in the grave for you and I, as our high priest gets ready to come out of the most holy place, is waiting on for us to have our sins on the curtain. Come on, does that make, does that make sense? So that's that, what that's saying is that they died in faith. They, they followed the prescribed path. Now it's waiting on you and I to now confess our sins, but also do what? What is, what is the definition of repentance? To turn away from them. Now, the preacher last night made it clear that we are, to, what is our motivator for doing this? Bring glory and honor to God's name to vindicate his name in front of who? Not the world. Give me the universe. So they died in faith, waiting on the promise. You and I are now in the situation at the end of the Day of Atonement. And our high priest is getting ready to make a move. He's been standing there, mediating on our behalf. The angels have been running to and fro, trying to get our attention. Listen, time is almost up. Let go of this thing. Stop that thing. Go to God with this thing. Repent of this thing. And as we keep saying, Lord, okay, not right now. The angels are nervous because they see prophecy taking place. They see the signs all around, and they understand Jesus is getting ready to move, yet his people are not ready. Jesus, when they have to go back to heaven and report today, I did all I could to get his attention. I did everything I could to help her. They just didn't, they didn't listen today. Well, now this is my vernacular. Angel, there's a little more time. Go back tomorrow. Go back and cover them tonight. Because if you don't cover them tonight, Satan will come into the room and suggest things to them and push them 
and make them feel despondent and full of despair. Go back down and fight for them. The next day, the angels are going through day by day. Listen, listen, Jesus is getting ready to come. Jesus is getting ready to come. Look at what happens. Something big happens. It grabs our attention. It arrests us. And we start talking amongst each other. Did you see that? Did you see that? The Holy Spirit is saying, did you see that? I let that, I allowed that to happen to get your attention. I'm getting ready to make a move and I'm getting ready to make an announcement. Those that are holy, let them be. Those that are righteous, let them be. Let them that are filthy. And the Lord is saying, listen, today, I will not tell you about tomorrow. Because if I tell you you'll be here tomorrow, you'll wait. The only thing I'm telling you is today is the only time you got left. Make your mind up today that you're going to follow me. Now, God having given us or provided something better for us that they without us cannot be made perfect. The Bible is saying that heaven is waiting on you and I. Those that died in chapter 11 is waiting on you and I. So when we get over to chapter 12, and it says we have so great a cloud of witnesses, it is referring to all those in chapter 11 who died waiting on the promise. Now let's see what else it says about this. Those, they are those spoken of in the previous chapter, those who have breasted the evils and difficulties in their way, and who in the name of the Lord have braced themselves successfully against the opposing forces of evil. They were sustained and strengthened, and the Lord held them by his hand. So those are the witnesses. And this is how they live their life. This is why it says <clears throat> that they died Obtaining a good report because they did what? What did they do to the evils? They breasted the evils. They withstood, but did they do it by themselves? No. If you, let me just say this. If you are in this room today and you are struggling with something or some things and you have been trying with all of your might to put it down on your own. Have you been successful? The only way we put things down is with God's help. Amen. That's it. We have got to come to Christ day after day, moment after moment, Amen. and then Still, we got to make a choice, Lord. Here comes the devil again. Lord, yesterday was a good day. This morning wasn't bad. Right now, I'm struggling again. But if we don't go to God right then, Lord, I'm in, I'm in a tough spot again. Then Satan starts to gain ground. Now, I want you to think of something now. Because I like to get to the practicality of the gospel. Have you ever been minding your business? Driving, working, writing, reading. Your mind ain't on anything wrong that you can think of. Suddenly, thoughts just come into your mind. You, you, you realize it came into your mind. But because it didn't set off an alarm, you left it alone. All day, you realize at the end of the day, you have actually been subconsciously thinking about that thing all day. And if you don't arrest it, it will grow. Suddenly, you're thinking things. And you can't understand, why is that even in my head? Why do I even want to do this now? Why am I stuck on this? Because when it came into your mind, you 
didn't go to God right then. Lord, I don't know where that came from. But I need you to take that right now. Amen. This is the war that we're dealing with where we cannot for a moment step away, drop our God and, guard and just go on with our life. When they come into our minds, Lord, Amen. here it is again. Now, that's going to happen all day. So what is that going to cause us to do? All day. So the Bible tells us to do what? Pray without ceasing. The devil knows that this is the end. And he knows that if I don't do something, if I don't amp up the attacks, I'm going to lose somebody. So I've got to amp up the attacks to keep them locked down. So, brothers and sisters, we've got to fight. We've got to make up our minds. Lord, I don't care what it takes. Give me victory. Give me victory. Now, because that clock is telling me that I got to go. So, greater cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. The weights that are here referred to are the evil habits and practices we have formed by following our own what? And inclinations. You can call that hereditary and cultivated tendencies to see it. But God says, listen, you don't have to struggle and fail because of something in your DNA. God says, listen, I am present and ready that if you call my name, I will call all the angels down from heaven to come and rescue you. Now, the practicality of the gospel is we have to reflect the character of Christ to make it into heaven. So I don't care whatever we talk about. It all leads us back to my character has to be transformed. When you talk about the signs, and they are important, I am not here to diminish them one bit. We need to see them, study them, dig into them, understand what we see. But at the end of all of that, what are the signs for? To give you an understanding of time. That's all. Let you know where the clock is. So if we're only caught up into the signs and understanding what they mean, but our characters are not like Christ, then we just got a bunch of information. It's all about transformation. What did Christ come and die on the cross for? So that we could understand the signs alone? No. He came to provide us strength to be like him in character. Amen. Now, now let's go forward. We can cover some more points. It tells us in, in verse 1, And the sin with, which doth so easily beset us. So I find it interesting that the Bible says, listen, all of these weights, you need to let go of them. And the sin, which so doth easily beset you. What does that mean? Lack of faith. Not, not just the lack of faith. If something so easily trips you up, that's that thing that, that's so close to you. You do it without even thinking about it. So let go of the weight, but also pay attention to that thing that keeps tripping you up over and over and over. Then it tells us how to do this, what to do. And let us run this race. Let us run with, what's that word? Patience. Patience. Now, 
There's a text in the Bible in Revelation that says, Here are the patience of the saints. Now, what do you think that word patience means? Perseverance. So we've got to run this race with some endurance. Yesterday's victories are for yesterday. We need new victories today. And we're praying, asking for strength for victories that are, we want tomorrow. It's a constant thing. Now, by the way, here are the patience of the saints. What's the rest of that verse? Here are they that do what? Now, brothers and sisters, that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Have you ever contemplated what that is? Brothers and sisters, in heaven, there was a council of peace with Jesus and his father collaborated together for the salvation of man. But guess what it took to put that together? The faith of Jesus. I'm going to leave heaven and I'm going to come down to the planet I created or that me and my, my father created together. And I'm going to come down and succumb to the creation I made. And then plead with them. I'm going to live the life in front of them in humanity so that they would understand what victory over sin can look like or is like. Amen. But I have no guarantees that they're going to follow. But I believe by faith. So before we leave heaven, Lord, Father, I'll give my life. At the beginning, I'll give my life. I'm going to put the whole universe at risk so that my people who I have created will accept me and then follow. That's the faith of Jesus. A belief that no matter what it looks like, because did it look bad on earth when Christ was here? Just a little bit? Just a little bit. Did it look good? Was it easy? Was he beset at every turn? Did Satan try to kill him over and over and over again? Simply because he knew that if I allowed Jesus to walk this earth, and walk up to the cross without sinning, we have lost a major battle. And it sets up the final war that in the end, there will be strength available for those people at Camp Cedar Falls Amen. to get to know me and get to learn of me and to rededicate their lives to me and to seek my face with all they have if we lose this battle, we will not be able to stop him in 2024. He will meet them at the mountain. And he will speak to them. And we run the real risk of losing a captive. We run the real risk of losing a prisoner if we don't stop him at the cross. But guess what? He was unsuccessful. In stopping Christ at the cross. He tried repeatedly to take his life. It wasn't time. It wasn't going to happen. And, the, and Satan didn't actually take his life. He gave it. He allowed it to happen. 
Because he had faith in the plan of redemption. So when it says, here are they, no, here are the patients of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God and have that type of faith that will not let go, no matter what it looks like, they will stand, they will repent, they will turn, they will hold on to Jesus Christ. Amen. And they will not let go. Amen. And you know what? That makes Satan scared today. That makes his whole camp tremble. Because if you and I today Make a decision, Lord, I'm going to follow you today. Amen. Lord, I'm going to let it go today. Today is all I can promise. Lord, you're going to have to help me tomorrow. You know what Satan starts going, wait a minute, cause a distraction. Because if we don't stop him right now, somebody's going to give their life to the Lord today. And we know that the end is near. The Sunday law we've been talking about all these years, it's about to happen. It's about to go down, brothers and sisters. And we're not going to make it unless we know Jesus for ourselves. If we don't love Jesus enough to sacrifice for him, we will not make it. We have to love him. Can, nothing can be in front of him. He can never be put on the back burner for tomorrow. We've got to love him enough today, Lord, today. Because all he's saying is, listen, we don't worry about tomorrow. We're just worried about right now. We don't worry about yesterday either. Because whatever happened yesterday, it's gone. Today, though. Today, come to me today. And I will do something special for you. Now let's keep going. Looking unto Jesus, which is what? The author and the finisher. Now, how did he author our salvation? See if you've been listening. By redemption. I almost think the answer is on the screen. How did he author our salvation? He authored it in the beginning. He said, I know that they're going to transgress. I know it. But I'm going to put a plan in place to save them. That if they choose me, they can live with me forever. So I'm going to author their salvation. Now, when Jesus came, and that, now, now I'm on, I'm, this is a little pop quiz. When he came on earth, well, well, first of all, first of all, to, to help us get there, what did he put in place to help his people understand the plan of salvation? The sanctuary. All right. So now when he came and he died on the cross, what was he doing? In anti-type. The sacrifice was given over and over and over for the sins. That's how blood got on the curtain. So he came and said, I am the lamb. I am that lamb you've been slaying. And he died on the cross. Now Satan says, that thing they've been doing for 1,500 or so years now it's happening in front of us. Jesus just showed up and died on the cross. Unspotted, unblemished, died on the cross. Resurrected three days later. Went back to heaven on time. Went back to the holy place at the right hand of the Father. Sanctuary language. So he put the sanctuary in play in anatype. Now, 1800, 10 years later, after 34 AD, a movement was born. 
prophetic in nature. They came on the scene doing what part of the sanctuary message? The day of atonement. But remember, Christ started it when he died on the cross in Anatype. So now we're living in the anti-typical day of atonement, which means if we study the picture that the high priest moved in 1844 from the holy place to the most holy place. And he's been there waiting on you and I. Now, brothers and sisters, there's so much coming to my mind. We could be here all afternoon. Brothers and sisters, listen. The Bible says that the four winds of strife are being held back for one reason. Waiting on you and I to get in a position where we can be sealed. That's it. He's waiting on you and I to make a choice today. Lord, I will follow you no matter where you go. Whatever reform you ask me to make, I'll make. You want me to stop dressing the way I'm dressing? Okay. You want me to remove the adornment that I'm wearing? Okay. You want me to start paying attention to what I put in my mouth. Okay. You, you, you want me to pay attention to the company I keep. Oh, okay. You, you want me to be careful with what I watch and what I listen to and what I watch on social media? Oh, 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 okay, Lord. Now, you know at the beginning, we said anything worth being a part of what? Cost you something. Now, we're talking about the cost right now. It's going to cost us something. If we stop watching the nonsense that's out there, are we going to be different? If we stop listening to the foolishness that's out there, are we going to be different? If we start dressing modestly and covering up, are we going to be different? Yes. If we adorn ourselves differently than the world, are we going to be different? Yes. Then if we love the Lord, God is about to ask you to do something. He's about to come to you personally and ask you, for some personal commitments in your life. He's about to ask you for some sacrifices. I can tell you right now, we're not going to get where we were going to go, but God has shortcutted and brought us where we are. Jesus is getting ready to ask you something. I died for you. I, I left heaven. I baggaged all of my divinity. I shrunk it down. I, I zip tied it. I, I, I did all I could and went into the womb of a human. That was hard work. But because I loved you, I folded myself up, broke myself down, and was born of a virgin. Joseph, you're going to have to wait. Don't come near her. She, he has to be born of a virgin. He came here. Can you imagine coming, leaving your divinity, all your power, everything about you that makes you who you are, and you come down here and subject yourself to the foolishness of humanity. He said, I did that because I love you 
And the faith that I have in the plan that me and my father put together, I have all faith in it. That somebody in 2024, in Camp Cedar Falls, they have been struggling with something, and I coordinated their life to make sure they were there, you are here today. Amen. He's done all he can to get you here. Now he says, I, I want to remind you what I did for you. You know your life's not good. You're struggling. Satan is after every one of us. Because the Bible says he knoweth that he hath but a short time. But Romans, let's go, let's go there. Let's go there and just read this. Romans. Five. Six. Romans five, six. <clears throat> When you have it, let me hear you say amen. amen. <clears throat> For when we were yet, what? Without, Without strength. strength. What does the rest of it say? In due, In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. What is, that, what, is that, what is that one scripture telling us? At some point, strength was not available. But there was a certain time where strength became available, and it's when. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So at the cross, when he died, when he yielded up his life, there was a plug that went in the wall. Strength was now connected. Now. What we have to do is make a choice. Lord, today, I want newness of life. Lord, I see what is happening around me. I'm studying your word, and I understand what the signs are telling us. And I understand that things are close, but Lord, my mind. It's not connected. My heart is everywhere but with you. I'm stuck online. I can't get loose. I'm stuck on videos. I can't let go. I can't study the word of God because I'm distracted all the time. It's hard to pray because my mind is cloudy. Lord saying, listen, today, if you want newness of life, if you want newness of life, I'm prepared to do it today. And let's consider one other thing before we close. Talking about cherishing the birthright. Esau did not cherish his birthright. He gave it away for a bowl of beans. He did not understand what his birthright actually meant. So he came in hungry. Now I want you to pay attention. We don't have time to dig this out. But he came in hungry. Now, what caused him to sell his birthright? Give me another word for it. His appetite caused him to get rid of his birthright. When Jesus came and, 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 and was baptized by John the Baptist and went into the wilderness, what was he tested on? The prophet says that he, that was by design. Because Adam and Eve fell in the garden due to. 
So he had to beat Satan first over appetite. Then he can move to something else. Esau sold his birthright because of his appetite. Now, what are we doing with our birthright? We are told that our appetite Satan is using to trip us up. There's a reason why there's a health message. There's a reason why we're not to eat certain things and to drink certain things and to get some rest because right here, got to be clear that when the voice of God speaks to you, you can hear him. And when Satan tries to come in and masquerade as Jesus, you know that's not Christ. I know the voice of God when I hear it. Now, brothers and sisters, Esau did not cherish his birthright. And he tried to take it back by violence. Now, because he did not cherish it, the Lord had designed for Jacob to get the birthright. But Jacob and his mother tried to help the Lord in his business. They tried to work their way to the birthright. Now, now, now brothers and sisters, God don't need no help. All he needs is surrender. That's all he needs. The work is his. He just wants surrender. Now Esau was the firstborn. Now in Exodus, the firstborn was referred, Israel was referred to as the Lord's firstborn son. The prophet brings out that we are God's people are spiritual Israel. So you can put yourself as the eldest firstborn son. There is a birthright. Brother Mason, what is that inheritance? What is that birthright? In the end, the goal or the reward is eternal life. But there's a birthright we have been given all of the information for salvation. All of it. The sanctuary. The complete plan of salvation. The third angel's message. A warning that no one can give. How could they? Why is it that we can give the third angel's message? Not just because we know it. What is it connected to? What does the first angel's message actually say? Because the hour of his judgment is come. How do you know the hour of his judgment? Without knowing the sanctuary. The sanctuary makes clear what happened in 1844. How would you know unless you understood the sanctuary? Birthright. Are we prepared to use the birthright? Are we living what we study? Are we studying? Do we know it? Do we know the third angel's message? Are we studying it? Do we understand the sanctuary message? Some of your faces looking at me like, I'm glad he didn't ask me to raise my hand. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this is salvation. How can we be saved if we don't understand how we're going to be saved? Where is our high priest? What is he doing? 
How long has he been there? God says, listen, you have a birthright. First, I need to get you in close. Esau did not relish a relationship with Christ. And because he didn't relish it, his birthright didn't mean anything. All he saw was, well, if I get the birthright, I get some money. But guess what, in, what happened in the end? He got the money. But you didn't know that. He did get the wealth of his father. Because when Jacob came back, he was already wealthy. And he looked at his brother and said, you can have the wealth of dad. But I got the inheritance that comes with the birthright. And now what happened with his life? Abraham, all the, all the lineage of Christ. Now, brothers and sisters, we have a birthright. We have a message of completion. We have a message that if we studied and cherish the message. Do you cherish the message? Or is it a burden to you? Do we love it? Or is it a burden? Why do I have to do this? Why do I got to take off that? How come I can't watch this? How come I can't dress like this? How come I can't do this? How can I do this? What is, uh, I feel in bondage. And the Lord said, I'm trying to free you. Because the one that makes you love that stuff is from the dark side. And in the end, after serving him all your life, he'll take you out. He doesn't even love those who follow him. Now, brothers and sisters, there's a lot more that can be said. But it's time to make a choice for Jesus. I, I believe that the Lord is walking up and down the aisles right now. And angels are touching you on the shoulder. There's a still small voice whispering in your ear saying, I love you. I'm waiting on you. I have been waiting on you. I don't care about what has happened in the past and I don't care what your life looks like today. All I care about is if you make a choice for me today. Just tell me you want to come home. God is ready to receive every prodigal son known to man. All he says is, I just want you to come home. Amen. I know he's walking up and down the aisles. I can see some of the looks on your faces. The Spirit of God is speaking to you, and he's impressing you, and he's reminding you of things that you know you are struggling with that you don't even want to speak about. But he's whispering, saying, nobody else got to know. I already know. Give it to me. Amen. Just give it to me. Let it go. Yes. Has your life been good to this point as it is? The angels of heaven are here. The Spirit of God is here. Amen. And he said, listen, don't come to this meeting and then leave the way you came. Why would you do that? I left heaven. I gave up omnipresence for you. I gave up a lot just to give you the opportunity to be saved. I have faith. Christ has faith. That somebody here today will make a choice. Now, brothers and sisters, it's, 
There are cards that are available. If you want to give your life to Christ, just notate it by raising your hand. And you can check the appropriate box on the card. If you're saying, Lord, I recognize that I'm in trouble and I need freedom. Music has got me locked down, Lord. I can't break it. Free me today. Let them know. If pornography is that thing that is holding you, locking you down, you can't take your eyes off of it. There's stuff in your mind that you want to erase. The Lord is saying, give it to me. Just all, just make the commitment today. That's it. I'll start the process today. If, 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 there's, if there's videos and if there's social media, if you're stuck on YouTube and you can't get away from it and it's not about the good stuff there. Lord, nobody knows what I'm struggling with. He says, mm-mm, get that to me. If you know that you can't go in a store and come out without buying something to drink that you don't need. The Lord saying, listen, I'm not here to debate what happened to you. I'm just here to tell you that I will free you. Amen. Just give it to me. If you're, ever, if you're struggling with something that you know you shouldn't need, you've heard the health message, you've, you've heard it been preached over and over, but you can't let it go. The Lord says, listen, I don't care about yesterday. Today. I will help break it. Jesus wants every single one of us to be in the kingdom. He's going to be sad if somebody here is not there. There will be a void in heaven if one of us is not there. And out of all the people that will be saved, he will still know that somebody missed out. I see the struggle. God said, hold on for a minute. I see the struggle. The look on your face that says, Lord, this is hard. Lord, I've been struggling. I've been in and out. I, I know my life is messed up, but, but I want help, Lord. I just don't know what to do. Just slip your hand up a little bit. Just, 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 just slip up your hand. Just, Lord, Help me. Save me. Our Lord and Savior, our high priest is getting ready to move, brothers and sisters. He says, listen, as the agencies of evil are combining and consolidating, I've pulled every angel and gave them an assignment. Work with my creation. Take the taste Renew their minds, cleanse their ears, their eyes, erase it. Bring their noisy minds to silence. But God won't wait forever. But while we have an advocate, make the choice. For God. Make the choice. Even as we begin to get ready to pray. While our eyes are closed, if that's what you need, while our eyes are closed, raise your hand. Let the Lord know that today I want to start over. That don't mean it's going to be easy tomorrow. In the next day, but today, God says, today, give me your whole heart. When Jesus comes, I want to see him in peace. I want to see his glorious face as he draws closer and closer. And this earth begins to shake. 
I want to be standing flat-footed, looking, knowing that I don't have to struggle with sin anymore. It's over. And now I can live eternally with Jesus. But that journey, that experience starts right now. It starts today. Father in heaven, Lord, what needed to be said is what you said to say. Lord, our hearts are pumping in our hearts because you started it pumping when we were born. When we were conceived, you put this process in motion and Lord, our hearts are beating. Some of our palms are sweaty. Some of us are agonizing. Lord, do I do it now or can I do it later? Lord, send an angel to them right now and help them raise their hand while we are praying. Lord, we want to be saved. Our families, our spouses, our children. Lord, come into our hearts. Lord, I pray that this experience at CYC, Lord, will not be in vain. Lord, even after this prayer, I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to massage and to press the issue. Time is almost up. We're so close, Lord, we can look over the precipice and see it. Lord, we want victory. We want to be unbound and freed and living victorious. To this end, we pray. To this end, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.